Hello students, greetings to you. In this video, we are going to consider scalar projection. As you can see on the screen, you see a typical example of what is called a scalar projection. Here we have two vectors and then one seems to be on the other, as you can see here clearly. So what we want to do here is that um, you can see that the vector here is being projected it seems it's standing on another vector so if it's standing on another vector you want to know what is that gap that the vector above is on the lower vector what i'm trying to say here is that um, we have two vectors and there is an angle between them of course you can see clearly that there is an angle and that angle here we can call it theta so if the two vectors they are overlapping one another at a particular angle we want to determine to what extent did one vector stand on the other and that is called scalar projection so let's look at this preamble now you know just like we have scalar projection we also have another one that is called a um, vector projection so there are two but uh, in this video we are going to consider scalar projection which means that um, what we are going to get what we are going to what, what, will we, what we are going to obtain here we only deal with the magnitude okay we deal with the magnitude of the vector a that is being projected on another vector the distance i mean the gap that is the kind of overlapping that is what we are going to consider here so as you can see here uh, it said that it involves finding the component of one vector in the direction of another I think this way here yeah, it's a little bit simpler if you look at it very well it said that it involves finding the component of one vector in the direction of another so which means that if two vectors are projected and they have angle between them then there is a way that one is standing on the other mm -hmm. so we want to know the gap that the upper one it has covered on the lower vector but what we need here is just only the magnitude so that's why we call it scalar projection so let's consider the first thing which is the dot product you know here you are familiar with dot product before right okay so here we 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 need the magnitude of vector a we need the magnitude of vector b and we need the angle between them the angle between the two vectors so once we know this then we can easily calculate the dot product okay so let's proceed uh, now that we understand dot product, I think now we can see clearly from the question one here that a dot b is equal to what magnitude of vector a, magnitude of vector b, then multiplied by the cos of the angle between them. And how do we find the magnitude? We can see one here. Okay, so let's consider the first case now. What if, if the angle between the two vectors is perpendicular is 90 degree? What does that mean about the issue of projection? So here. Yeah, um, Two vectors here they are perpendicular to one another which means that the angle between them is what is 90 and if the angle between them is 90 what is cos 90 that is zero so which means that the dot product here is what is zero ah ha you know what this one is saying is that um, there is no way vector v can be projected on vector w that is what it means because the angle between them is 90 degree and which means that v will continue to go on its own why w will continue go to go on its own and the angle between them is already 90 degree so to get the projection here will be very very challenging if it's not even possible because we are called we call this one orthogonal orthogonal because the angle here is in form of 90 degree but immediately the angle is above 90 let's say the angle is between 0 and 89 then there will be projection if the angle is between 91 to 180 then there will be projection no 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 when it's between uh 91 to 179 there'll be projection because at 180 again we're going to consider another case again about this kind of projection so let's proceed so now that is ve vector perpendicular that is when the angle between is 90 okay so let's look at question number one this is a tutorial question which i think you are familiar with and it's saying here that the dot product of two vectors what is going to give us of course going to give us scalar that is why that is the origin of that name that we call scalar projection comes from because you know we are talking about dot product that we need to use the concept of dot product so and whenever you are talking about dot product 
definitely what you're going to get is scalar. Now let's consider this tutorial question too. We have two vectors, okay? And we are interested in the angle between them. Now what is the angle? So here now we have uh, uh, the first vector is 1 and 2. Why the second vector is 2 and 1? That is 1, the, the vector V is 1 high plus 2J. Why vector W is 2I plus J. So what is the dot product here is that um, we can use the concept of dot product to get our consider to be 4 over the magnitude of vector V, the magnitude of vector W, which is 5. So this one will give us 4 over 5. I think from here we can know our theta. Our theta is now equal to what? Cos inverse of 4 over 5. So that will give us the angle between the two vectors. So let's go straight to the business now. This is scalar projection now. Uh, you can now say clearly what I was saying the other time that uh, when two vectors they are being projected in the same direction, one will overlap the other. You can see in this screen now we have V that is standing on vector W, but the angle between them must be 90. I mean, I'm not talking about theta now, I'm talking about this angle. Aha! Because if V is standing on W, you know that V can come down directly and it will stand on W, but the angle between that projection must be 90, which is this 90 we're talking about here. So, by the time we come here, look at this now. The distance from here to here is what we call PW of V, and which is called the scalar projection of vector V on vector W. Please take a look at that proposition uh, on. Uh, that will help us to get this concept very well. When you hear on, that means that something is on something. You know, for instance, the laptop is on the chair. I mean, the laptop is on the table. So if the laptop is on the table, you know that the laptop cannot cover all the space, all the available space on the table. So we want to know if the laptop is on the table, then the gap that the, lap the laptop has been able to cover on the table is what we are interested. That is what we call a scalar. So the second one here is saying that um, uh, here we see that vector v is standing above while vector w is below. So what here, can we still get the projection here? Yes, but the point here is that if v should come down, if we should reduce the angle theta, let's say from 45 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10 to 5 to 1 to 1.1 to 0 0.5, you will know that v will be standing on w. Yes. And if V is standing W, what is the gap that vector W covered on vector V? That is what we want to calculate. That is what we refer to as scalar projection. So here, for the second case, we call it scalar projection of vector W on vector V. So let's talk about the formula now that we can use to calculate this. So if you look at this now, you can now say that this formula here is very related to what we refer to as a dot product. But for this case, for this case, which is the vector projection of V on W, vector V on W, you can see now that we have it to be V, a magnitude of V cos theta. That is the vector projection of V. Uh -huh. Then on W, which is the same thing as V dot W multiplied by the magnitude of W. So, which means that this expression here is from the dot product, from the concept of dot product. But the only condition here is that theta can only be between 0 and 89. When you get to 90, it becomes impossible to get the projection again because one, will, it, one vector will no longer be standing on the other. Uh -huh. And by the time we are away from 90, that's from 91 to 179, there will also be another projection. That's good. So let's proceed. So this expression here yields a scalar value. Of course, like I've said, uh, we call it scalar projection. So we're going to get scalar value. So let's consider the definition now. So the scalar projection of vector v along w, that's why some scholars present it. Why some people say we can say that vector v on w, or some people can use it vector v onto w. So in this class, we are going to consider vector v on w because I like that preposition on it seems better than along and onto. So let's use vector projection V on W. So we use this expression. Look at it. Absolute magnitude of vector V, aha, cos theta, will give us the answer. But if other way around, we can also get this scalar projection of V on W by using the dot product divided by the magnitude of W. So let's look at this tutorial question one. 
What does this expression stand for? Don't forget, it's saying that vector scalar projection of W on V. Okay, please let me to correct this. This is actually this is magnitude. Please excuse me for this. This is magnitude. This V here is magnitude. Okay, so that is what it stands for. So you can see now that this one is saying that vector projection of W on V. So you can see vector projection of W. Oh, then on V. So the second question here is that um, the dot product is close related to orthogonal projection of one vector onto the other using the expression this. Is that true? Yes, that is true. That is definitely true. But remember, this orthogonal projection here, if we have theta to be 90, then one vector will be going up, will be going up, will be going vertical, why the second vector 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 will be going horizontal and then the angle between them is always 90. But in terms of projection, <laughs> in terms of projection, you can see that it may not it may not really stand on the other, it will be to get onto of the other one. That is why you can see that when we started, we said cos 90 is what is zero. And if cos 90 is zero, that means that v dot w is vector is what is zero. In that case, we may not get any value for the scalar projection even when we get to vector projection too we are not going to get any value for it so this is definitely true now let's solve one example now we have this example here we have vector b to be minus four and one and we have vector h to be one and two let's look at the interpretation of this look at the diagram now for vector a vector a is what one and two look at it this is one i plus two j this is vector a now you can see vector a now so from the origin we have this vector a then what about vector b minus 4 and 1 so look at it now minus 4 i plus 1 j this vector b now you can now see that this is b and a you can see the way they are moving aha definitely there's an angle here between them let's first of all get that angle look at it now so we have b dot a over magnitude of a don't forget that this is the vector projection of b onto a or vector projection of b on a so on a you can just see that we are having it here so and if we don't even know anything about a if we cannot find the magnitude of a then we can use magnitude of b multiplied by cos theta so if you do this on your minus two over five so you can get the angle you get the angle but what does it mean in real sense is that if this is vector b and vector a vector a can come down it can come down we can sketch the other part of it and when we sketch it then vector b2 we sketch it down when we sketch down it is that if this one is 90 degree then the distance from here to here is what we call vector projection of a on b look at it of a on b of a on b of a on b okay so let's continue oh we for we continue okay that, uh, so, excuse me sorry that's vector projection of b on a okay so or b on a you can see now that this is a so b it is on a b it is on a so what are the two cases the case number one is that if we want to get scalar projection of a on b and we don't know the magnitude of b and we know the magnitude of a and we know the angle between them then we can use definition a here to give us the scalar projection what i'm trying to say is that uh, we are interested to find the scalar projection of one vector on the other like in this case scalar projection of vector a on b but we don't know the magnitude of b but we know the angle between vector a and b then we can use this expression second one is that um what of if we don't know the angle between the two vectors and we know the vector a and b in sense that we can get we can obtain the magnitude of vector a and b so we can use this expression this is very similar to the tutorial question three that we've solved because we know vector b we know vector a but there is nothing about the angle bit angle in between the time. of course we know that we, there is a way we can find the angle we can obtain the angle by ourselves but this time around let's just proceed and use the two magnitude to obtain the scalar projection so there are two cases like i've said earlier that if the theta is between 0 and 90 that is from 0 to 89 then we get the scalar projection will be greater than 0 but if the angle between the two vectors is between 90 and 180 then the scalar projection will be less than 0 so we are going to stop here 
but there are some tutorial questions that we can look at there. Okay, let's stop this first one here. We have two vectors. We have the magnitude of vector A to be 10 and the magnitude of vector B to be 16. And the angle between them is 120. Of course, you can see that 120, that is for the second case, which means that the scalar projection will be less than zero. Okay. So, we are asked to find the, uh, uh, the projection of B on A. I mean, the projection of A on B. The vector projection of A on B. That is it. PB of A. You can see on, it will be subscript. On B, subscript. So, we use magnitude of A cos theta. That will give us minus 5. And for this case here, mm, vector projection of B on A. So, we get this, which is magnitude of B cos theta, then we have minus 8. You can see that in these two cases now, since the angle is between 90 and 180, the vector projection is what is negative, which is the magnitude, which is the scalar. So, that's why we call it scalar projection. Uh, second question here, we are asked to find the scalar projection of vector A onto itself. So, if vector A is on itself, what does it mean? It means that the angle between vector A and itself is zero. Okay? And if it's zero, then look at the solution here. Cos zero is what is one. So, if cos zero is one, then we can say that um, a magnitude of A cos zero, which will give us magnitude of A. So, which is that the scalar projection of vector A onto itself is the magnitude of vector A because it will be standing on each other perfectly. Look at the diagram here. Let me zoom it so that you can see clearly. Look at this diagram. Look at it now. We have vector A and we have another vector that is on itself of the same magnitude. So if they are standing on one another, then it means that the projection will be the same. Which means that A, vector A is standing on itself and the projection will be the same thing. So what about the second case? Uh, in the opposite direction, we are saying here that uh, we are interested in the scalar projection of vector A in the opposite vector. So, in the opposite vector, we can the angle between them is what is 180. And what is corresponding to that is minus 1. So, you can see now that here, they are having magnitude of A cos 0 cos theta. And cos theta is what is minus 1. So, we cannot say that the scalar projection will be what negative at magnitude of A. So, tutorial question 3 here. We have two vector 3i plus 4j, 2i minus j, and we are asked to find the scalar projection of A onto B, or the scalar projection of A on B. So let's find the dot product. So we find the dot product to be 2, then we find the magnitude of B. Don't forget that we are dealing with A onto B. So we use this expression. We use this expression. And if you want to use this one too, you can use this first one, which is magnitude of A cos theta. That is, if you know the angle and you know the scalar projection A, or you know you can find the dot product, then divided by the magnitude of the vector that will be below, that will be below. It's just like I'm standing on someone horizontally, or perhaps I make an angle that is less than 90. So definitely, I will be projecting on that person. Then we need to find that. So. Let's come to the end of this, but let's always look at this image that is very good here. You can see here it's a scalar projection of one vector on the other. So if one vector is standing on the other, then there's going to be an angle. So we want to know the extent, the gap that the vector on top will cover on the vector below. This is called projection of one vector on the other. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye.